Welcome to Learning to Prospect 101. Today we're going to learn all about hematite, or you can call it hematite if you want. We're not word snobs. It's totally cool. Sometimes I say mineral when I mean to say element and vice versa. The main thing is that you take away some valuable information from this video. I will be showing you some amazing gold specimens that have gold, hematite, and quartz mixed together. Very, very cool. So let's jump right in. Why is it important? What is it and where are you going to see it? Well, you can see it anywhere. You can see it all over the world because it's one of the most abundant minerals in the world. You can see it walking on the beaches of Alaska, Oregon, Washington, California, the dry washes of Arizona, the rivers in California, Georgia, Colorado, everywhere. It's all over the place. When you're crevicing and you're cleaning a crevice out with your screwdriver, you see those black sands, they're most likely hematite and or magnetite, maybe a couple other things, but these are the most common black sands that you see. And when you have them in your gold pan, the reason why the black sands move and the gold stays still is a difference in specific gravity. Now hematite is 5.3 and gold is 19.3. That's a huge density difference. I encourage you to look into why Hematite is important commercially and artistically, one of the main iron oxides. You'll hear it said over and over, gold rides an iron horse. Iron is the mother of gold. In the southwestern United States, in southwestern California, in New Mexico, Nevada, and Arizona, you can find the desert trumpet plant, and that's often a indicator of an area that will have hematite or iron oxide, but neither one of these things guarantee there's any gold. Black sands are never a guarantee of gold. Hematite is never a guarantee of gold. It's a guarantee of hematite. So when we think about it, it being one of the most abundant elements on Earth or minerals on Earth, it's also one of the most abundant in regards to color and appearance. It can be black, red, brown, yellow. It can even be iridescent. It can be kind of matte and dull, or it can be very, very bright and shiny metallic. It's also one of the super secrets is it can be slightly magnetic. Now, magnetite is very, very magnetic, thus the aptly named magnetite. But hematite is also magnetic, and that's more apparent with a neodymium super magnet. You'll see it much more with that than you will with just a regular run-of-the-mill magnet. So let's jump right in. And take a look at the gold because I know that's what you want to see. This is one of the examples. You can see the gold there. You can see it right next to the black and brown hematite. I found this specimen in a mine tailings pile in Arizona. Apparently the ship just pulled in. Now here's another one. You can see the gold specks mixed in with the black and brown hematite and the quartz. There's even some very, very darkly stained quartz in this piece as well. Again, I found these in mine tailings in La Paz County, Arizona with the Mine Lab Gold Monster 1000. Another really cool thing about the hematite in these pieces is not only did I detect these pieces, but me knowing and discovering that the hematite was where the gold liked to run allowed me to find other pieces too where I wasn't even able to detect them I was just able to visually pick them up, use a loop, and see little bits of gold because of the hematite. These pieces you're seeing here, these two, they definitely sound off on a detector. They absolutely scream, as you can tell, just by looking at the amount of gold in them. So now let's take a look at a big chunk of quartz with hematite. I'll turn the gold off for just a second. I promise I'll turn it back on because I know that's what you love to see. But this is a great example of a big chunk of hematite and you can see where it's not only kind of dull and earthy but it's also very shiny and metallic. The wash that this big rock came out of has all kinds of hematite in it from fine grains all the way up to big bigger chunks than what I'm showing you right here. So again it can take on very different appearances the dull to shiny and the colors. Okay, I'll turn the gold back on so you can get your, your fix of gold. Yes, the good stuff. So again, I found more gold than what you're seeing because I keyed in 
to the fact that it ran with the hematite. In this tailings pile, there's tons of different rock types mixed in. Because when the old prospectors looked at this stuff, they looked at the rock. If they didn't see gold in it, they chucked it. This is where technology can kind of give us a boost. These guys got tired just like we do. They couldn't catch everything, and they certainly didn't in this tailings pile. Now, not every tailings pile is gold. Not every mine is gold. Uh, very few have detectable gold, and it's very, very hard work. I'll sidebar a little bit and say if you're going to work a uh, tailings pile, I'll teach you about this too. The easiest way to do it is take a rake and a bunch of neodymium magnets, start raking through it, start at the bottom usually, and let that rake grab all the bits of metal that it can so you can actually detect the gold as efficiently as possible. But again, back to hematite, this is what this video is about, is it's abundant, it's colorful, it has a wild appearance all over the place. Use this knowledge, understand what it is, go research beyond this video. You'll love learning more about hematite, the bloodstone. Go find out why it's named the bloodstone. Find out why it even has that name. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from this video. There's more on the way. Get out there. Get off your lazy butt. Go find some gold. The world's waiting for you, and you can do it.